And anyway, there's going to be a review video from a um, repair guy's point of view. All we do is work on these fence boxes. We're an independent shop. So we see every brand, every model, every style, basically every brand. There's a lot of newer Mickey Mouse brands that are floating around out there by like, you buy on Amazon and eBay, which we're not too familiar about, but I'm sure we'll get one of those new, those ones in before too long at some point in time. But um, this is going to be a review on a Speedrite 3000. A lot of the Speedrite units are, are going to be designed like this, from the 1000 all the way up to the 12,000i, and I'm not a fan of any of them, honestly, for the kind of money they ask for those things. You I'll tell you why they're not worth what they're asking, because of how they're. Yeah, they're, the reason why they ask so much for this stuff is about 15, 20 years ago and older, that generation of fence chargers were top notch. They were just you couldn't get as old school electronics. They'd run for 15, 20 years or longer with hardly any issues at all, minus lightning, I guess. Um, we get lots of old speed rights that are. 1992, 1993 models look like they've had hardly any work done to them with the factory boards in them still original factory board in there do a little work to board, fires right back up um, and away you go but these ones are not like that they're uh, not like that at all so they are a AC-DC model they run off of either 120 volts or, or 12 volt and the downside of them being 12 volt internally tell you why they're why it's kind of a downside because most some people will use this on a, on a solar setup or a 12 volt setup outside which is fine to do but these are not a sealed unit so water can get inside of them and when water gets inside of them or if water gets inside of them what's water electricity do it can short stuff out well how speed right solves that issue I mean, the capacitors and transom are fully sealed, you know, epoxy resin, like the black stuff there, and black stuff underneath on the transom itself is fully encased in epoxy, so salt, uh, water cannot penetrate the capacitor or transformer, which is pretty normal on most stuff, but their boards are encased in like a gel type epoxy, a little shimmer to the case there. Well, here's what the, this is brand new board in there. It's all brand new front case, a new board. We swapped over the capacitor transformer knobs and everything, bolts and everything. But here's what the original board looked like. See all those hot spots? This big old part there, which is that doodad there. This big part there. It's that big, is that part right there. And there's all these hot spots over here. And see all those little bitty parts? Well, the reason why they put this resin in there is to waterproof the unit. Because if it's outside and water gets on the board, well, it shorts everything else out and it's the thing's screwed. Um, so to slow, slow it down, prolong the life of it, they put this epoxy gel on there, which is, you know, it's pretty... I mean, you can peel it right off there. It's not like it's hard as a rock. But... They do that to waterproof the board so water is getting it doesn't mess electronics up. But the downside of doing that is, you know, electronics get hot as they run, like a light bulb gets hot as it runs. Um, so the, the little parts can't breathe inside of the epoxy and the dumb thing shorts out. You know, shorts the part out, burns it up, whatever. So, <sighs> shit design. I don't like it at all. I hate bad mouthing companies because I know everybody's got to got to do their thing, but man alive. There's got to be a better way to do this. I mean, I mean, well, I know there is. Because um, <laughs> the only brand does this, everybody else doesn't do this. Everybody else has got a different type of housing, a different shape. They don't epoxy their boards. They've just got them encased a different way in the case, or the case is just designed in a way that not two halves pushed together this way. They're assembled a different way. So they, they got around a different way of without having to have the gel crap on there. So, yeah, expect to get... The good thing about them, they're about the 300, three year warranty on them, but they're not cheap, like $300 for these things. And there's other three jewel stuff out there uh, AC, DC, and just straight AC, or straight 12 volt uh, stuff out there that is cheaper than this, or some of them cost a little bit more, depending on the brand. And um, uh, you'd be better wise not to, not to spend the money on this thing. I mean, it's got three year warranty, but so does Gallagher. So speed, or uh, so does a Parmac, 
and this stuff seems to be last a little bit longer, especially the Gallagher. The Gallagher's cost more than these, but a lot better built, and don't have the overheating electronic problem like these things do. So, but man, I just, uh, it's just a shame how they're, they're building this way. And then, like, just look at the board. It says on there 2009. So, I guess that's when they came out with this this uh, model, 2009, I guess. Maybe a little before or after that, I guess. But that's this is True Test 2009 on the board. So, that means they probably haven't made any changes electronically to the board to make them hold up better. And so, you know, this, what, we're 2024, what's it, 15 years ago? They're still building them today, just like this. So, I mean, if you value your money, I would honestly consider something different. Ask me down in the comments below. I'll help you out. See some suggestions. Um, email me. Call me. Text me. Here's the information right here. There are links down below in the description area. But if they ever came out with a new style of unit in this jewel range, plus or minus, I would happily review it. And then you'll give it my two cents. And I, it's like, I hate bad mouthing any company uh, on stuff, but man, this this does deserve a little bit of uh, bad mouthing just because I, I just, just because it, the way it's designed with the epoxy crap on there, the kind of money they ask for the stuff, if they were asking like half the price of what they're selling these things for, maybe not so bad because you get three, four, five, six years out of one. Uh, I guess. 150 bucks wouldn't be so bad, I guess, if you get five years out of it. But they're asking $300 for these things, and this thing is, um, um, you know, you're lucky if you get like three to eight years. If you're lucky, eight might be kind of pushing it. Not too often you get one more older than that, at least for us anyways. But, but it works fine. This thing's back to working, clicking right along now. But I wouldn't have, would never have bought one to start with. I would have bought something different. And then um, still be running today, most likely. So that's my two cents on it. Till next time, see you later.